Welcome, welcome everyone. Today is our first morning jam in the season of Advent. That's right, today marks the first week out of four weeks that we're counting down until Christmas. We are getting so close to this season and it is a wonderful joy to be able to share it with you. So as we're singing this week, I really want to encourage you to uh, sing along with these um, songs because this week we're going to get to know the songs so that next week we can get some help from our friend Tess to dance out the motion so that you're familiar with them already. Two of the songs that we're going to be doing today are ones that you have probably heard before if you were with us in the church um, uh, last year. Uh, we went through these songs and we learned them, uh, but one of these songs is actually a new one to probably many of you. So I'm going to go ahead and play these three songs for you uh, so that you can be ready and be familiar with them when we get ready to dance next week. I hope you'll join me. All right, our first song today is called It's Christmas, and it is probably a new song to many of you, if not all of you. We've never sung this song in church before, um, but the parts of the song actually repeat throughout. So this is a great one to be able to sing a few times through and get used to how the melody and the song goes. I hope you'll join me in singing It's Christmas. Silent love. 
born is the king. Now, if you were with us last year around Christmas time, we actually learned and sang this song many, many times throughout the Christmas season. But if this is new to you, I would love it if you would join me in singing so that you can learn this song as well. because the, today marks the beginning of Advent, a season where we prepare for Christmas and the day that Jesus was born. There's a lot to celebrate during this season as we prepare for the birth of Christ, Jesus, God's Son. Now, when we look at these next four weeks, we're going to start hearing about the story of Jesus' birth and how special it were, was, how people came to celebrate him and acknowledge him as the Messiah, now, the word Messiah means it, this person has been promised. He is the anointed one, the one that God will send to lead the people. So when we hear this word in our Bible memory verse this week, I want to uh, go ahead and highlight it for you. We're remembering that this word really means the person that God sent to lead the people because this was somebody that he had promised. In our Bible memory verse, it comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 11, and it says this, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Now, today, we're not even yet talking about the day that Jesus was born. We're going to go a little bit before that and hear the story of a time when someone heard some very good news. Now, I want you to think about a time in your life when maybe you've heard some good news. Maybe in that moment you found out that you were going to have a brother or sister. Or maybe you found out that you were going to get to do something that you've never been able to do and you really wanted. Maybe you were getting a pet or something happened with your best friend and it was something to be celebrated. These moments of good news make us happy. They bring joy to everyone. And in this moment, the story that we're hearing today is a moment when 
the good news that this woman hears is making her very, very happy. Let's go ahead and listen to our story today. Our Bible story today comes from Matthew verse 1, chapters 18 to 24, and Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 47. It says this. The Bible tells us that God sent an angel to talk to a young woman named Mary. Mary lived in a small town of Nazareth. The angel said, Greetings, the Lord is with you. Mary wondered what the angel meant. The angel said, Don't be afraid. God is pleased with you. He is going to give you a baby boy. You are to name the baby Jesus. The angel said this baby would be great. Mary was so, so happy God had chosen her to have this special baby. She told the angel that she was the servant of God. Mary told Joseph about the special baby she was going to have. Joseph was a man, the man she was engaged to marry. Joseph didn't know what to do. Then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. The angel told Joseph that, to take Mary as his wife. And the angel said to name the baby Jesus because the baby would save people from their sins. Joseph did just what the angel said to do. Mary and Joseph were glad they heard that good news that Jesus was to be born. Let's go ahead and review our Bible story. Now, in the story, we know that an angel came to Mary, but my first question is, what was the message that the angel told Mary in the story? What was the message that he told her? Well, we find out that the angel had good news, that Mary was expecting a baby boy, and that boy was going to be named Jesus. There were many things that the angel said that were good things, that this was God's son, and he was promised to the people to lead those people into, um, into righteousness and away from sin. The next question is this. What, did jo what was Joseph's reaction when he heard about this baby, Jesus? What was his reaction when he first heard about it? Hmm. Well, at first, he was really worried about it and not so sure. He was like, you know, this woman, I'm engaged with. I'm going to be marrying her and I find out that she's pregnant. I'm not so sure about this. And and who is this angel who's come to see her? At this point, Joseph has no idea of all the plans that God has. So then my third question is this. How did God help Joseph understand the good news? How did God help Joseph understand the good news? In the story, we find out that the angel appears to Joseph in a dream. While Joseph is sleeping, he sees an angel from God telling him that what Mary said was true, that there is a boy that's going to be born and Mary is going to give birth to him. Mary is going to have a baby and this is the promised Messiah, the Lord. This was the way that when Joseph woke up, he realized, this is good news. It's something to be celebrated. And he wanted then to support Mary on her journey to be able to have this child. Now, when we think back to how this, this story all plays out, we know that there are so many good things to celebrate. And pretty soon we're gonna learn of the time when baby, the baby Jesus was born. But the best news of all that we could ever receive is that God sent his son to lead all people and to forgive all our sins. This is truly good news. I hope you have a great week, everyone. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our fourth week of Advent. My name is Abby with Hyde Park Presbyterian Church, and today we are here for another Bible lesson. 
getting us closer and closer to the day of Christmas. We are so close. Can you feel it? It's in the air. You've probably seen it everywhere. Well, today, as we are talking about our story, we're going to be focusing in a little bit on three men known as the wise men. Now, I want to hone in and really focus on the word wise. Now, being wise is different from being smart. Someone who's smart might know a lot of things. Like they might know four times 10 is 40. They just know it. It's a fact that they figured out. Maybe they're good at school. But being wise is something different. It's really knowing what the difference is between right and wrong. And maybe when to make a decision to have the best outcome. Now, these wise men really do, did live up to their name. And today we're gonna to learn a little bit more why we call them the wise men and how they play a part in the story around Christmas. Our story today comes from Matthew chapter two, verse one through 11. It says this. When Jesus was born, some wise men lived in a country far away from the town of Bethlehem. These men saw a special star. They knew the star meant that a special baby had been born. This baby would be the leader, a king of God's people. The wise men went to the city of Jerusalem. They asked if anyone at, knew where the baby was. They said that they wanted to worship the baby. When the king in Jerusalem heard that the wise men had asked, he was upset. He was afraid someone would take away his power, even if it was just a baby. The king called the leaders of the temple and asked where the baby would be born. The temple leaders answered, in the town of Bethlehem. The wise men saw the special star they had seen before, and they followed the star. The star stopped right over a house in Bethlehem. Little Jesus was in the house with his mother, Mary. The wise men were very happy to find Jesus. They bowed before Jesus and gave him gifts. The gifts were very expensive, treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. After celebrating this wonderful birth, they left. But instead of going back toward Jerusalem and toward the jealous king, they went back to their home by another way. Let's review our Bible lesson, the one we just heard. The first question I have for you today as we talk about this um, and you talk further with your family, I want to ask you, how did the wise men know that Jesus, the Messiah, the one who had been promised, how did they know that Jesus had been born? Hmm. Well, right in the beginning of the story, we found out that even though the wise men were very far away from Bethlehem, they looked up in the night sky and saw a special star. And they knew in that moment that when they saw that star, that the King, the Messiah, the promised one, Jesus, had been born. My second question is this. Why was the King of Jerusalem so upset about a baby? Why was the king of Jerusalem so upset about a baby? Well, we learn as we were reading the story that it sounded like he was pretty jealous. He heard that this baby had been born and three wise men, three very rich kings, these very important men were coming to worship him. They had brought him gifts of very important and wonderful items, treasures like gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when he saw this, he started to feel like, who is this baby that might come and try to steal my power? I'm the king. I should be in charge here. They should be bringing me gifts. But instead, they were bringing it to a baby who had been born because they knew that he would one day be king. My final question is this. How 
did the wise men show that they were truly wise? Well, there were a few times that they showed their wisdom or the fact that they were wise. The first one is in the beginning of the story when they had studied so much and they knew from the moment that they saw the star in the sky that that was the sign that Jesus had come, that Jesus was born, and they were ready to celebrate and go straight away to uh, honor the birth of this king, Jesus. The second one was this. At the end of the story, after they had celebrated everything, they knew that there was a jealous king back in Jerusalem where they had come from. But instead of going that way and giving the king more information about the baby Jesus, they decided to go by another route, another path home, so they wouldn't have to potentially endanger Jesus by sharing too much information to a king that May have not um, may have been upset about his birth and may have wanted him dead. It was a very wise thing to do. They chose to make the right choice in that moment, and that absolutely showed that they were wise. I want to bring us back to our Bible memory verse that we've been looking at for the past four weeks, and it says this from Luke chapter two, verse eleven. Today, in the town of David. A savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Now, one part I want to pull out from this verse today is this phrase, to you. Jesus was born as a gift to all of us. He is the gift on Christmas. So when God had Jesus born, Jesus was the man who ended up showing us the way and being a light to the world to help us find a new and righteous path, a new and good thing to do. When they say that Jesus was born the Savior to you, it is because it is God's gift to you. Jesus eventually did so many things, but by the end of his life, saved us from our sins. He is absolutely the best gift we could have ever been given and today, that gift is for you. What a joy that is. And it really does remind us of the reason why we celebrate Christmas and what good things it brings to our lives. I hope that you take that good news and share it with someone today as well. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful Christmas. I'll see you all later.